Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to continue looking at economic systems by now focusing on market economies through something called the circular flow model. But before we do that, we, I want to build out a little bit of vocabulary first. So a product market is a market for goods and services, and we've actually looked at product, product markets to death over the course of uh, this this course. Um, everything from you know perfect competition to monopoly to oligopoly, all of these market structures fall under uh, product markets. But they can also fall under something called factor markets or resource markets. Remember that resources are also called inputs. So these can be called input markets, or they can also be called factor markets because of the idea of a resource being a factor of production. And these are the market for resources, the buying and selling of resources. Because after all, if you're a business, unless you're making your own resources to build your products, you're going to have to buy those resources from other businesses who are in the business of selling resources to companies, right? And so that's the idea of a factor market. And as we're going to see later on in this unit, just like product markets that can have different market structures, perfect comp, monopoly, oligopoly, etc., factor markets can have different market structures as well. Uh, next, we've got something called factor payments, and these are the cost of a resource, right? So for example, if you are buying land for your business, the, the money you're using to buy the land is called rent. Uh, if you're buying a piece of capital, like a hammer, that's called rent and also. And then for labor, the if you're purchasing someone's labor, you're giving them a wage. That is the cost of that resource. So uh, just some vocabulary there with factor payments. And then finally, transfer payments, which is something we're actually going to talk about uh, a little bit in macro as well. Uh, these are government payments to individuals. The key here is there is no uh, goods exchanged. In other words, the government is not providing these payments in exchange for goods and services from the individuals. They're simply handing the money. And so the examples here are things like welfare or stimulus checks, where the government's giving money to individuals and there's no expectation of a good or service provided in exchange for that money. Those are called transfer payments. The government is simply transferring money to individuals. So with all that in mind, let's look at something called, uh, well, first of all, before we get to that, I want to talk about public goods really quickly. Sorry, I forgot about public goods. Uh, public goods are goods that are non-excludable and non-rival. And these are two very key words, non-excludable, non-rival, uh, that we will see later on in Unit 10 when we get to market failure. Because public goods, as you'll see later on, pose a, a certain challenge uh, to societies that produce them. So non-excludable means that an individual cannot be prevented from consuming it, right? You can't stop someone from using it. And they're non-rival, which means two people can be using it simultaneously. And the classic example here to make this uh, hopefully a bit more understandable is national defense, right? So for, national defense is a public good because it's non-excludable, right? You really can't stop someone from being protected by our military. Like, that's just not how it works. And it's non-rival because the military can protect multiple people at the same time. And so that's the classic example of um, a public good. And again, we'll see later on the challenges that are posed by public goods and why it makes most sense for the government to provide these types of goods. So now with all that in mind, let's look at something called the circular flow model. And that's what you see here on the screen. So the circular flow model is a way to understand how a market economy works. And there's a lot of moving pieces here, and so I want to just take some time and break it down. So first of all, in the circular flow economy, a circular flow model of a market economy, we're assuming that there are three key players here. So we see that there are businesses, 
the government, and individuals. Sometimes you'll see individuals called households. Just keep that in mind. And these three uh, individual groups uh, uh, participate in two kinds of markets. So we've got uh, the resource market or the factor market and the product market. Okay, so they're interacting in, in those markets. And so we see that if we just look at the resource market for a second, we see that individuals or households contribute resources into the resource market. Remember, in a market economy, we learned in the last video on economic systems that resources are privately controlled by individuals in a market economy. And so they're sending their resources into the resource market. And in exchange, what they're getting for those resources, you see the green arrow going from the resource market to individuals, they're getting income or factor payments. They're getting the money for those resources. Remember, the rent, the, the wages. On the other side uh, are the businesses. They're receiving the resources from the individuals. And in exchange, they are paying those factor payments to the individuals, the cost of the resources, right? So when the resource market or the factor market, it's the exact opposite of what it is in the product market, where in this case, businesses are actually doing the, the buying. They are demanding resources and individuals, which it's not quite right to think of them as consumers, but if it helps you, that's fine. They're actually doing the supplying. They're actually selling something instead of buying something like we'll see at the bottom in the product market. So you have to flip it. And we'll see that later on when we actually model uh, factor markets with a graph. At the bottom, you'll see product markets. And so this works just like we've been doing uh, in the, throughout the entire course, where individuals are buying goods and services. Those are flowing from businesses to individuals. And in exchange, individuals are spending their money on those products and that goes to businesses as revenue. It's not profit because we have to subtract out the cost of the factor payments, but it is revenue to the businesses. And so what we can see, if we're just looking at the outer, at, at the ring is going around individuals and businesses, taking out the government for a second, we see that the green arrows represent the flow of money throughout the economy. And the blue arrows and the red arrows uh, are the flow of stuff throughout the economy, right? And so, and they're going in opposite directions. Money's going, uh, what would that be, uh, clockwise, and uh, stuff's going counterclockwise throughout the circular flow model. And so that is the idea of uh, the circular flow model outside of the government. So what role does the government play in the, the economy? Well, first of all, the government gets money from individuals and businesses in the form of taxes. You can see that in the middle of the chart. In exchange for those taxes, the government then provides subsidies, which are basically government payments to businesses, and transfer payments, which are government payments to individuals, as well as providing public goods like national defense to protect businesses, individuals, or provide other essential services like public schools as an example. So we can see how businesses, government, individuals all have a role to play in what is really a mixed economy because the government does have a role, but is definitely a market economy. Now, this is not something you will have to draw on the AP uh, exam. In fact, this is actually something that uh, you really don't see that often on the AP exam. But it is important you understand the general workings of an economy. After all, that's kind of the whole point of uh, economics, is understanding how economies work, how individual units in economies work, and the roles they play, and why that matters. So that's all for this video on the circular flow model. Until next time, have a great day.